Hi there guys, and welcome back to another vlog, blog, review thingy. It's not really a vlog because you can't see my face, but that's all the better for you, really. Um, today we are reviewing another 3DS game that I picked up completely on a whim. Basically, I got an email from Best Buy that said, Hey, you have five dollars that you have to use in-store. Because the Marvel figures for Disney Infinity weren't out yet, I decided, hey, let's just pick up this game. Because, I mean, I played the demo of the original, and I thought, why not? Might be fun. And that was Theater Rhythm Curtain Call, but I'm sure you already knew that because you clicked on the video title. And here is my review rating. I am super pleasantly surprised. See, I was really expecting just a super basic, like... Okay, here's a list of songs. Play them! You might unlock new songs or small things. But what I actually got was like a full-blown almost, aside from no overworld, like an RPG of music. See, it's like... But at the same time, it's don't, don't think of that as like a whole story and everything. There's no story. But I'm talking like, playing songs not only gets you experience for your characters to unlock new abilities, which is awesome, and then new characters and items, but it's like, you can get all sorts of stuff that affect how you play the music, how well you do, and of course, once you get all that, then you can take your super crazy built party to online battles, or local battles if you actually have a friend who owns the copy, which I doubt you will. Um, so I am very, very pleased with this. And another thing I'm super happy about is the selection of the music. Now, I mean, of course, you got Final Fantasy 1, through 14 in this because I mean those are those are the mainstays and then 10 2 and you know we have the 13 trilogy but then they start getting into some stuff that I never expect them to ever bring up again like maybe the first like, like okay first off tactics that's a fan favorite I've never played it myself but I know a lot of people love it um so that's cool that it's in there you know that's a fan favorite um the original Crystal Chronicles that was my first Final Fantasy that I owned and um like, the number one, I played that game entirely by myself, despite being a completely multiplayer game. Very hard, but fun. I wouldn't be able to do it now, but young me was like a master gamer. Um, so you got music from the first Final Fantasy Crystal Chronicles. And finally, the one that I never expected to get in, um, that I heard about once when this game came out in Japan, and I couldn't believe it, and it got to the point where I just forgot about it, because it was such a crazy idea. Music from Final Fantasy Mystic Quest, which if you don't know, here's here's the quick sum up of what Mystic Quest is. Final Fantasy V was too tough for Americans, so they made a special Final Fantasy that was like directed towards introducing people into the, the franchise, you know. You got, it's super basic, but it's basic in a way that actually introduced me into Final Fantasy. Um, and I love that game. Like, it is not a hard game. Neither is it a deep game, nor the story deep. Um, the music's awesome, though, which is a perfect fit. But it's just so nice to actually... it to be a thing in this. And not only that, they also have characters. So you got Benjamin from Mystic Quest, and you got a Calvat named some crazy default name that I never used from Crystal Chronicles. So it's like... If you're a Final Fantasy fan, or even if you've really just played a couple games, like, aside from it missing the spirits within, it almost has the entire Final Fantasy everything in here. Um, spin-offs excluded. There's some spin-offs that aren't even touched, you know, like the Chocobo Dungeon. Um, no Kingdom Hearts, which I'm a little sad about. Like, some of the original Kingdom Hearts pieces would have would have been cool, but I guess, uh, you know, makes sense. It's owned by Disney. Um... And yeah, no, it's like, it's one of the few things where, like, I usually feel disappointed with crossover titles or, like, anniversary titles. I'm like, oh, there could be more. But with this, I'm actually given a full package that I am so happy with. Like, it's amazing. Now, let's talk about, like, the actual gameplay and stuff. It is... It's nice. Because Elite Beat Agents was a fun game, but it was a hard game. Like, you had to be moving everywhere and spinning and all sorts of crazy stuff. Even on the hardest difficulties, like, this game can be hard, but the actual execution of the controls is super easy. It's, you have three different ways to do, you know, to do anything. You have tap, flick, and drag. And for most of it, like, there's one exception, I think, it can be anywhere on the bottom screen. Like, you don't have to be aiming at stuff, you don't have to be making sure you're tapping it in the center. 
it's just anywhere on screen because the cursor itself moves on the top screen. So it's like, the way it's done is just a way that you don't have to worry about accuracy. I was playing it on the bus, and aside from a bump coming and, you know, flicking in the wrong direction, it's like, it works, and it's fun. Um, that's the big thing. It's like, it's fun and it's accessible. When I, when I first started playing, like, I was getting double S ranks and triple S ranks just when I started. Mind you, I was playing on the easy ones, which are really easy. But at the same time, if you just want, like, a nice relaxing experience, that's what you can go to. And it's fun! There's so much to it, too. You know, you got, you got regular, just free play pick a song. You got, like, a quest mode where you have to do a bunch of songs and a playlist. And along the way, it's like any HP loss is lost unless you use a tent. And it's like, it's like an adventure, if you will. And um, then there's, like, a versus battle mode. There's cards, which are basically, like, trophies from Smash Bros. to collect. There's a butt-ton of characters. Like, I'm talking, there are two to three from almost every se uh, every game, with the exception of, like, the super spin-offs, like Mystic Quest and Crystal Chronicles, which have one. But, like, you got everyone, to the point where it's amazing how many there are. Um, in case you're wondering, my starting party consisted of Bart, Tidus, Zidane, and Warrior of Light. So you pick four to start off with. And then from there, you can just, like, um, then you unlock more and more and more. Uh, they have to be, like, the main characters, though. And there's just so much in this game to play and to love to unlock. Every time you beat it, every time you finish a song, doesn't matter if you beat it, you get points that add up towards, like, your total score. Um, I'm at around 6,000 right now. So, and every, I think, 250, you unlock something. And it's either, like, an event song, so that's one with, like, a cutscene playing, which, those are so cool. Because you get to see, like, all sorts of cool um, FMVs from all the old games and new games. Um, and then you can also unlock another one that I really look forward to are the chimes. So the sounds that are made whenever you either tap, flick, or, or drag. So, like, normally it's just a shing, like, like, a, like a, a shimmer, if you will. But you can unlock ones that are, like, classic sound effects. You can get the cursors, you know the, you know the cursor sound in the original Final Fantasies when you're moving it? You can get that. You can get the sword slashes from Final Fantasy X. Ten, that's ten. Why did I say X? Um, you can get the um, door opening sound from Final Fantasy 2. And like all sorts of classic sound effects. I don't know how many there are, but if there's a lot, I will be very happy. Because some of them sound just so good. When you, when you, like for me, I have the cursor sound for it to be when you, uh, when you swipe or flick. And it just feels good. The length of the sound matches the length of your movement when you're doing that. And it just sounds so nice. And I mean, it's a nice sound to begin with. And none of the, like, aside from a few really soft songs, um, none of the, like, clicking that you're doing really ruins the song, which is nice. Um, you get you get to hear the songs in really nice sort of... There's a few regular, like, the, the old ones, mind you. Like, there's a few that are regular 8-bit. But then there's a few that are, like, remixed and they're really good. So, like, all in all, a great package. Um, if you're a Final Fantasy fan, I mean, hey, this is a must. Like, well, if you don't have rhythm, that's a thing. You have to have rhythm, because it is a music rhythm game. And at the same time, don't expect, a, a don't expect a story. Like, there is, at the beginning, there's a story of, like, apparently this is a sequel to the first one, and this is an alternate world of Dissidia, and it's just, like music crystals and all sorts of stuff and I didn't even pay attention um but yeah it's like it's a great title and honestly again I was super pleasantly surprised because there, there's so much to it that's not you know that's not expected or even needed in a game like this and it's awesome I think one thing to note is that when I bought the game it did come with the special five track CD the CD's nothing special like they're just a few of the remixes Honestly, if you could just get the game on its own, I'd go for that because I think I paid like $45 for this as opposed to the 40 it would normally be. I mean, I like to collect game CDs and stuff because I mean, game music is my favorite music, but it's not a mandatory thing. If you can just get the game on its own, you are more than fine. So, yeah. Theater Rhythm Curtain Call. Great title, and I look forward to the next Final Fantasy game, which is uh, 15. Or 14, A Realm Reborn, if I get a PS4, which might be happening. But, uh, it's funny. I will say, uh, again, I, I keep saying that, but this just makes me 
Talking about stuff makes me think about other stuff. As I was playing, I thought to myself, this makes me want to play a Final Fantasy game. And so I put in uh, 10, 10 HD, which I still haven't beat, and I haven't even got to 10 2 yet, which I need to. Um, so I started playing that, and I got really into it, and I was so, I was having fun again. Because it just reminded me of how much I love Final Fantasy, which I sort of forgot about it. Um, and then, when I was done, I was like, okay, I'm about tired, I beat a boss, sin spawn, you know, whatever. And then I was done, and I'm like, okay, I'm gonna go to, before I go to bed, let's just play a few songs. And it was like, it was a nice cycle of the music that gets you into Final Fantasy, and then the Final Fantasy is fun, and then you wind down a bit, back to the music. So, again, all in all, super pleasantly surprised. So, if you, again... <laughs> I mean, it's the same thing I said for Professor Lane vs. Phoenix Wright, but it's like, if you think you're gonna like it, you will like it. If you're a little wary and on the edge, you might not like it, you know, maybe if you're not a music fan. You have to have an ear for music, and you have to know music, and you also have to have headphones. Because the only way to get, like, the full sound is, like, good headphones. Not earbuds, I'm talking, like, full-blown headphones. And, um, yeah. So, Theater of the Curtain Call fun game. See you all next time when I talk about, I don't know, whatever. Feel free to leave comments about what you'd like me to talk about on this or the previous video. Um, likes are appreciated. Subscribing's cool if you're not a subscriber. I mean, if you're not, that's actually amazing because I, I never thought someone would actually just watch a review that I did, but hey, that's cool. Um, so yeah, thanks. Ciao.